You get on your right, which is like long. <laughs> I'm in the center and the left. That's right. Yeah. 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 Oh, we can do two for me because I want to block that. Yeah. That's an actual oh, cost. Well, well, we can discuss that later. I got it. <laughs> All right. All right, all set. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Um, thank you for coming. I'm uh, Michael Haas, administrator of the Wisconsin Election Commission. Uh, for some voters, the November election is already over. Municipal clerks have been issuing absentee ballots over the last couple of weeks, and some are conducting in-person absentee voting with expanded hours. Over 75,000 ballots have already been issued statewide, and over 2,000 ballots have been returned by voters so far. Other voters are only beginning to focus on the November 8th election. And we are highlighting efforts today to assist Wisconsin voters in becoming registered and in ensuring that they have the necessary documents to be able to vote. I want to mention that tomorrow is actually National Voter Registration Day. Uh, we are doing this a day early because I and some of our staff will be in Milwaukee tomorrow meeting with the Wisconsin County Clerks Association. So we're here today to talk about two initiatives of the Elections Commission to promote voter registration and the voter ID law. So I'd like to introduce two of our commissioners, our Commission Chair Mark Thompson uh, and Commissioner Don Millis to get us started. They are both attorneys and were appointed by legislative leaders of different parties. After that, I will co cover some of the finer details. Uh, Megan Wolf will add some tips for voters and then we will take questions. Commissioner Thompson. Good afternoon. As um, Mike said, my name is Mark Thompson. I'm the current chair of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. And Don, I don't know if, come on up, I don't know if we've got cameras here. Don and I have the privilege and honor to serve together on the commission. And we're both here today because we both believe uh, that this Eric project and the IDPP the voter ID thing are both very crucial. There has been unanimous agreement on the commission to date mm -hmm. on these matters. As Mike mentioned, tomorrow's National Voters Registration Day, and we are going to be mailing, the commission is mailing, with the help of the staff, 1.28 million cards, postcards. And they're right here. I'm going to go out to everyone that is on our system, that is currently has a valid ID, a driver's license, but they're unregistered voters. And we know that there's a lot of mail going out to people, and we want to highlight and take the time today to say you're going to be getting a postcard. It's an official state postcard, and please register to vote. This is going to be a historic election. And we have 1.28 million people that we know are unregistered that need to get registered. And with that, I'll turn it over to Don. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> Mark gets to uh, give us the general thrust, the important stuff. I give you the background, which is my job. Um, the, um, the reason we're here, the reason we're doing this is because the legislature mandated that the Elections Commission join ERIC. ERIC is the Electronic Registration Information Center. <clears throat> Part of that requirement, part of joining it, is the, ma the mandate that we send out this, this mailing. Uh, Eric is, uh, a, is a, 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 a group or a member, a, I guess an organization that has 26 member states. Uh, Wisconsin joined this year. Uh, it started in 2012. Uh, the impetus for Eric is not only to make sure that our, uh, everyone who can register is registered, setting up mailings like this, but also to maintain the efficiency and um, an integrity of uh, registration lists. So Eric has the ability with the other states to make sure that people moving into the state or moving out of the state or moving from municipality are tracked and so that people when they go to vote they can make sure they're registered and they're not uh, uh, surprised by the fact that they voted in perhaps one county one year and they move to another county. This will help uh, alert them that they have to register again. It'll make things uh, s smoother on, uh, on election day um, so that they can uh, be encouraged to vote uh, to register in advance, um, which will hopefully uh, shorten lines and make uh, democracy go even smoother. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Millis. Uh, as Commissioner Millis indicated, 
Uh, ERIC is a consortium of states that share their voter registration data and their uh, database from their division of motor vehicles. Uh, all of that data is uh, shared and matched so that this consortium can return results to its member states of individuals who appear to be eligible but are not registered, uh, or also individuals who appear to uh, have moved to a different state or maybe died in a different state, which we may not otherwise know about. Uh, so one requirement for joining ERIC is for the state to send out this mailing to unregistered residents. The cost of this mailing is approximately $225,000. Um, the state is being helped by the Pew Charitable Trust, which is helping to offset the cost with a grant of $150,000. Uh, as you know, Wisconsin has election day registration, but getting people to register early helps to reduce lines at the polling place and reduce costs for local clerks. Everybody who is getting one of these postcards already has the photo ID they need to vote. Uh, as we said, that's because the mailing list comes from the DMV database of individuals who have a driver's license or a state ID card. And we really appreciate the cooperation of the DMV, which worked hard with our staff to complete this mat matching process quickly so that the mailing could go out on time. Now, after getting registered, we want to make sure voters are prepared for Election Day. If someone does not have a photo ID to vote, we want people to know that the DMV can help them, even if they do not have a copy of their birth certificate. All you have to do is make one visit to the DMV, to your local DMV office, and bring what documents you have to apply for a free state ID for voting purposes. DMV will then issue you a receipt with your photo that you can use for voting uh, just like a driver's license or regular photo ID card. Uh, DMV will send the receipt by mail. It's important to note that uh, in the week before the election and the week of the election, DMV will send that receipt by overnight delivery. But our main message always for voters is it's best to get started now. Make sure you're registered and that you have the um, proper documents to become registered um, and also to uh, get a photo ID before the election. So now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Megan McCord-Wolf, who's our voter service specialist, to talk about what voters should do if they get one of these postcards. Okay. Great. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'm Megan McCord-Wolf, and I'm going to explain what you should do if you get this postcard in the mail from us. So the postcard is going to prompt voters to register to vote. The postcard asks unregistered voters who need to update their name or address or who need to start a new voter registration to go to our website, which is myvote.wi.gov. The website will guide the voter through the registration process or with registering at their new, or at their new name or at their new address. At the end of the process, the site will also give you detailed instructions on how to print your form and mail or deliver it to your municipal clerk along with your proof of residence document. If you're unsure if you're registered to vote and you receive this postcard, you can actually check the status of your voter registration on the My Vote Wisconsin website. You can put in your name and your date of birth and the site will tell you if you're already registered and you'll be able to see if you need to update your name or your address. Now, if you happen to get this postcard and you are already registered to vote and your name or address has not changed, this postcard does not affect your eligibility to vote. If your record for voter registration is active and your name or address hasn't changed, then no action is required on your part. Now, while we're asking voters who receive this postcard to go to the My Vote Wisconsin website, Please keep in mind that this is the same process that any voter who needs to register to vote or update their name or address should follow in order to, uh, to register to vote. Now if you receive one of these postcards and you prefer to give us a call, you can give us a call at the toll-free number that's listed on the postcard. Also, if you don't have a computer or internet access and you receive this postcard, you can give the toll-free number a call or you can call your municipal clerk and a voter registration form can be mailed to you. Now, as Mike mentioned, there are three other ways you can also register to vote. So while we want to make sure that you're ready and prepared for Election Day and register ahead of time, you can also register in person in your municipal clerk's office. 
you can register with a special registration deputy, or you can register at the polls on election day. day. Just be sure that no matter how you register to vote, that you provide a proof of residence document. Now, a proof of residence document is something that shows your current name and your current address. So this could be something like a utility bill or a bank statement. Once you're all set and registered to vote, the next step is getting your ballot. Now, some voters, they choose to get their ballot by absentee ballot by mail. Others vote in-person absentee in their clerk's office. And others go to the polls on election day to vote. No matter how you vote, be sure to bring your acceptable photo ID. Now, there are some people that are exempt. If a person has a hard time getting to the polls because of age, illness, infirmity, or disability, they can request an absentee ballot be mailed to them without providing a photo ID. So once you're registered to vote, make sure that you have the acceptable photo ID that you need by visiting our website, bringit.wi.gov. Most voters already have the photo ID they need, so you can check it out there. Um, if you don't have one of the acceptable photo IDs, like Mike mentioned, there is a free State of Wisconsin ID card that's available. They'd like you to bring some things like a birth certificate, but if you do not have a birth certificate or other documents available, the DMV can still help by providing a ID through their ID petition process. And this ID can be used for voting purposes. Now, if you get to the polls on election day and you still don't have the ID that you need, there is still what's called a provisional ballot. And this allows you until the Friday after the election to either apply for one of those ID card receipts or to get your ID and bring it to your municipal clerk before that Friday after the election. Just to kind of summarize, uh, the postcard and anybody that needs to register to vote or update their name or address should go to our website, myvote.wi.gov, to check your voter registration status, start a new voter registration, or update your name or address. Also, once you are registered to vote, make sure that you have the acceptable photo ID that you need for Election Day by visiting bringit.wi.gov. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Mike for questions. Before we get to questions, just a couple of um, items. Uh, we do have a copy of the uh, temporary receipt that voters will get if they enter the ID petition process at the DMV and if they're not able to if DMV is not able to verify that that individual has all the information they need to get an actual photo ID at that time, um, it does note at the top that it is uh, valid for voting purposes only, but this will be um, issued to those individuals. And uh, it is good for 60 days. If that petition process is not resolved by that 60-day uh, deadline, the, um, the temporary receipt will be renewed for another 60 days. So we do have a copy of that. I would also mention as far as the mailing that uh, the first postcards are going out today. Uh, over 300,000 postcards, three to 400,000 postcards will be mailed today. The remainder of the 1.28 million will be mailed throughout this week. Um, it, it may take a few days for it to um, uh, arrive in recipients' hands, uh, depending on where they live in the state. Um, but we would expect by the end of this week, or uh, by, at least by the middle of next week, that those postcards should be um, showing up in people's mailboxes. With that, we'd uh, open it up for questions. With the 1.28 million, um, do you know how many of those are people who have never been registered, and how many are just people who need to update their registration? I believe it's um, as far as what's in our database, it's people who have never well, who are not currently registered. Mm -hmm. So they may have been registered at one point and they are not uh, registered now, or they may not have been registered at all in our uh, statewide database. Um, do you have an expectation as to of those 1.28 million, how many do you think will follow through and actually get registered? Um, I don't think we have any really reliable statistics. Um, uh, Eric has compiled statistics of what they think the impact of these types of mailings have been. Um, throughout the country, but um, we do have a very high rate of registration in the state of Wisconsin, higher than most states, so it will be interesting to see if that affects the number of people who actually return the postcard. Uh, we do not really have a projection for what we're expecting. Um, as Megan mentioned, we do have our, our toll-free number that will be staffed. Um, 
and that number is available for um, people who get the postcard and just might need some assistance walking through the process. Um, although they're directed to a website, they can't actually register online yet, right? They've got to print things out and mail them in? Correct. Uh, the registration form needs to be um, completed. It can be completed online, but it needs to be printed out, signed, and the original form returned uh, to the municipal clerk. Online registration, we are working on that as well with the DMV, and we expect that process to be available early next year. Mike, at the top you mentioned there were 70,000 absentee ballots issued so far, right? We believe over 75,000. 75,000. Now is that mail requests or are you counting in-person early absentee ballots? All, all forms, whether it was um, mailed, in person, um, downloaded on our MyVote Wisconsin system by a military or overseas voter or sent by email or fax. Um, and that was as of Friday, and so we've not updated those numbers. Uh, we expect that um, it's uh, significantly higher at this point. What was your starting point for measuring that? What date? Uh, I believe we only started last Tuesday, I think was the first so statistics we generated. Tuesday and Friday, those five days? 75,000 went out? No, no, by Tuesday there were some that had already been issued, I think around 20,000 or so, um, if I remember correctly, by last Tuesday. Okay. 2,000 returned? Right, as of last. Now, that, th those are also ballots that have been issued and returned and the information is entered into our system. There might be a little bit of a lag in uh, that information being entered in our, into our system. Do you anticipate doing this in future elections, mailing out these postcards, or is this sort of a one-time thing? Now, the ERIC membership agreement requires that we do this type of mailing before every general election, so every fall of uh, even number of year, although we are only required to contact individuals once. So if they receive this mailing and they do not register, they will not be included in the mailing in two years. So what states have found is that the first mailing is a very large mailing. We expect uh, in two years the number of individuals receiving the mailing will, will drop uh, dramatically. I'm sorry, Mike, why is that? Why would that drop in two years? Uh, because uh, under the, the ERIC membership agreement, states are required to contact individuals only once if they are appear to be eligible but they're not registered. Um, so they will not continue to get the same postcard uh, every two years. So, no, the, I'm sorry. so if, if you only have to do it once, why are you doing it again? Well, we will have, uh, there'll be new people that show up in the matching process, many, many, many fewer, but there will still be people who have moved um, uh, or, you know, turned 18, have, uh, now have a license or a photo ID and are not registered. So no database is perfect, there's always when you're dealing with over a million people, you'll have some mismatches. Probably somebody who's already registered and has everything lined up correctly is going to get one of these cards. Any notion of if that's going to happen to 1% of voters or 10% of voters, and um, is, I, is that going to create any problems? Well, it, it's, a, it's a great question, and we have talked to other states, other ERIC member states, and they have said that that is one thing um, to be aware of, to expect calls from people who slip through the matching process. We have stated on the postcard that state records show you may, may not be registered to vote. Um, so we expect there may be some people who are registered to vote. As Megan said, this will not affect their eligibility. Um, we have tried to come up with criteria, matching criteria with the DMV and uh, with Eric that is as foolproof as we can, but we expect some to slip through. We just don't know. We won't know um, how many until we start to get some phone calls. You know, on that issue, I think it's very important, though, to know that no one will be coming off the list prior to the election. You know, the cleanup of the registration list will take place after the November 8th election. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for coming.